Since the 8th of April 2014, so almost a decade, the CPU air cooler market has been dominated by Noctua and the NHD15 has been sitting on the throne for the best max performance and best noise 2 performance ever since. And it's over now. This is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite, Be Quiet's latest and best air cooler they have released yet. And even if I'm spoiling the benchmark section, it is by far the best air cooler out there. Better than the Noxia NHD15, better than a whole bunch of AIOs. It is impressive on a whole other level. And it starts at the bottom. We got a 40 by 45 millimeter nickel plated copper base. And to make sure that every point something of a degree is squeezed out of this thing, there is a miniature heatsink sitting on top of it. Going up from the there we got seven 6mm heat pipes but the layout is also quite interesting. Instead of evenly distributing them all across the whole block, Be Quiet decided to make it five rows, where the outer rows have two heat pipes one after the other. And that's a quite interesting design choice because if you think about it, um, if a CPU is generating heat with the most concentrated spot being in the center, which is rarely the case, but that's like another topic, but if that would be the case, the central heat pipe would be the one that is most exposed to the heat. The problem with that is if it goes up from there, it is also the spot where the central fan hub is located. So it is also the spot where the least amount of air is going through. The most amount is going through the edges or the outer edges, the spot where the two heat pipes are present, which is very interesting and might be a very contributing factor to how this performs. The main piece of this cooler, however, is still the heatsink. We've got a dual tower cooler with a 43 and a half millimeter tower on the left and a 43 and a half millimeter tower on the right. Both of these are getting slimmer towards the middle section with the left one ending at 41 millimeters and the right one slightly slimmer at 36 millimeters. Standing on the table, the complete tower ends up at 155 and a half millimeter. And if you add all of the covers and, and the fans, the minimum height of the Dark Rock Elite ends up at 168 millimeters. This is a giant beast. Speaking of covers, the top of the cooler is covered by a matte black cover featuring a Be Quiet logo in the center and a RGB line going all around it. The whole thing is attached magnetically and once you remove it, you will notice that the central fan is attached to the whole thing. This one is a 135 millimeter Silent Wing 4 looking fan spitting at up to 2000 RPM. Now I would love to give you more info on, on that fan or any fan actually, but there isn't any available as of now. But then there is another 135 millimeter fan on the right end. This one is also spinning at up to 2000 RPM and it is semi-permanently attached to the cooler. Thankfully, however, both of these can be daisy-chained using the proprietary pod that Be Quiet added to them. And after that combination, everything can be hooked up to your motherboard using regular PVM and 3-pin ARGB. Being a permanently attached fan, the RAM will always be an issue, but not necessarily. By default, you can get away with up to 33mm high RAM, so non-RGB, not necessarily like low profile, but like semi-low profile RAM, will all be okay. However, in case that you need more space, Be Quiet developed something, let's say, interesting. The right fan is not actually attached to the heatsink, but it is attached to two rails, which are then screwed down onto the heatsink. And these two rails actually have multiple positions in which the fan can move up or down. So in case that you really need the real estate of the cooler, you can just move the right fan high... <coughs> yeah, higher. <laughs> Now, two things on this. If you like the design, that will be absolutely up to you. Funnily enough, we here in the office, we are completely divided about this. In my opinion, this looks quite stupid. I really prefer like the, the old school mounting clips and then just move the fan up. That's my taste. That's just, I don't, don't like seeing all of that plastic. However, the other person loves this approach and thinks this is so much better than the clip, so we are very much divided, and that's then really up to you to decide what you like, but in my opinion, this does 
look kind of funny. The other thing is, and you just saw it, it's not enjoyable to uh, put the fan higher. The process is quite brutal. It won't break anything. Everything is hella strong here, but it's it's quite the nasty sound. Yeah, also putting it down like ah, yeah, it works, but uh, it's it's nasty. A quite interesting thing about the cooler, and especially because all of these brackets, the way Be Quiet designed all of them, the cooler creates quite the wind tunnel. Looking from the front, there is no way for the air to go other than straight through the heatsink. And thanks to the brackets in the middle, the tunnel just continues until the hot air is then blasted out in the back. But what about the added goodies and installation? Because we got a treat here. The Elite comes in the same type of box as anything with the Be Quiet logo on it. All black, a bit of imagery and some short specs. Inside we'll find the cooler itself, some thermal paste, installation hardware for all the nowadays relevant sockets, a manual and the all new, all black Be Quiet screwdriver. Yeah, Be Quiet really tries to get away from that orange color. And now for the installation, thank you Be Quiet. For Intel, take the backplate and position the Intel screws onto the right position before securing them with the rubber ring, outer holes for LGA 1700 and inner ones for everything else. After positioning the backplate behind the motherboard, screw in the Intel spacers on top, followed by the brackets with the ends pointing inwards and then screw everything down. Over on AMD, remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them by the spacers followed by the brackets with the inner side leaning towards the CPU and then screw everything down. And now the treat I was talking about. Not only did be quiet, not pre-install everything to the heatsink, allowing you to remove the central fan without having to rip it off. But instead of having that central mounting bridge they used to have for as long as I can remember, now we got everything permanently attached to the cooler. So from an installation standpoint, we can now just grab the cooler, slap it on top, screw it down, and then attach the central fan by clipping it in everything with one hand, no pre-attached clips that you need to like rip apart, no mounting bridge that you need to keep in place, making like a standing installation absolutely impossible. This is a great approach, great job designing this, and I truly hope that this piece of shit rots in hell and never finds a fucking way back. But before I forget it, after installing the fan, you can choose if you want to use it at its fullest potential or if you want to break one of its legs and make it a cripple. Underneath the top cover, we got a little speed switch. Pushing this to quiet makes the fan spit at max 17 on RPM. It's cool to have the option, but be myself, I would always just use full performance and then set a proper fan curve. That makes so much more sense. Anyway, with everything covered, let's finally get to the benchmarks because I was not exaggerating in the beginning. This is the best air cooler I have seen so far. At a low 120 watts workload, the Dark Rook Elite dominates the air cooler category. At 31.9 degrees C above ambient, the Elite managed to be the best air cooler we have ever benchmarked. This includes outperforming the Noctia NHD15 by a degree 0.6. An excellent result, so excellent in fact, it outperformed a bunch of 360ml AIOs. What the actual hell? But it's Be Quiet. And if we take, for example, the old Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, that thing wasn't ultra high performance. It really wasn't. It was, it was good. But the greatness in it was, or the, the biggest strength, was that it was dead silent to begin with. And the Dark Rock Elite is even quieter. From start to finish, the Dark Rock Elite is the new bar that you need to measure your cooler against. It has not been outperformed in neither performance nor noise. From 100% fan speed all the way down to 30, the D15 isn't standing a chance. The Cougar Forza is left behind and even the old Dark Rock Pro 4 looks like a hella bad thing in comparison. 
At 250 watts workload, the Dogrook Elite becomes even more impressive. At 61.5 degrees C above ambient, it beat the hell out of the Noxia NHD15, this time at a staggering 3.1 degrees C, not even mentioning that the old Dogrook Pro 4 was already sitting above 74 degrees C at this point. It's a very, very impressive result, given that this is only an air cooler. But the corresponding noise to performance ratio looks even more impressive. Again, from start to finish, the Dark Rock Elite dominates the playing field. The D15 does not stand a chance from start to finish, and the Dark Rock Pro 4 is just a dot on this graph, where the Elite can now create a whole line with six measuring points, because we were able to get as low as 40% of the max fan speed whilst maintaining above 250 watts workload. And now something that I did not believe I would be seeing for at least like for the Noxia NHD15 version 2. In the last like 10 reviews or 10 cooler reviews, I have been saying that no air cooler can do 320 watts permanently. And for the longest time, this was really the case. Pulling off like that load requires three things. An extremely optimized base that can pull all of the heat away as quickly as possible, enough and good heat pipes that can transport it from A to B, so from the base to a heatsink, and a heatsink fan combo that can dissipate it. And until now, there was no combination of the three that could pull off 320. For AIOs, sure, but they had water and just a sheet of copper in between the heat and the water, so that's kind of unfair. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we got the first air cooler that survived the 3900K at 320 watts permanent workload. At 83.1 degrees C above ambient, the Dark Rock Elite managed to pull it off. Now keep in mind, at 320 watts, we are allowing the cooler to try their luck until the CPU reaches 110 degrees C. I would not advise you to do that. I really wouldn't. But we need to do that to test how the best of the best are comparing to each other. And as far as air coolers are concerned, this is a premiere. And actually, most 240s AIOs are already gone at this point, and so are actually a dozen of budget 360 options. This is impressive, to say the least. But what's even more impressive is that the Dark Rook Elite can do this at a lower fan speed. Even if it only survived for three individual measuring points, the Dark Rook Elite managed to create a freaking noise to performance line. And because it wasn't impressive enough, it completely outperformed the Geometric Future Eskimo Junior Neon 36, which yes, it is a long name, but it is a freaking 360 AIO. This air cooler just beat the crap out of a 360mm AIO by every metric. So where do we stand? It is, by now, the best air cooler that I have seen. The Noxia NHD15 is off the throne and the Dark Rock Pro Elite just took its place. From now on, the golden goose, the one that every air cooler needs to be measured against, is the Dark Rock Elite. So where do we stand? Of course, this, this is an absolute recommendation for everybody who is willing to put the cash on the table. As of now, I have no clue for what price it will retail. It will take a few more days, I think even tomorrow maybe I will get a mail with the message, but I will make sure to write it on the screen here. Now I don't know if this is good or bad, but it, it kind of doesn't matter. This is the best in slot option we have as of now, so unless Be Quiet puts like an insane price tag on it, let's say 200, which is just insane, but if it is below that, it is the best option anyway. And if they stay below like let's say Noxia level of price, well, then you have something that will be very hard to beat for the next few years. And from my side, an absolute necessity to at least consider. It looks amazing, the RGB implementation is great, it is black with more black, matte black, um, and a and, and, and bit of mesh black, which looks modern, modest, sleek, and every buzzword that I generally like. Of course, it's designed, and that's for you to decide, but I really like the way they put this together. But it's not, a, it's not about the look, compared to the old Dark Rock Pro 4, the installation has become a lot easier. The overall build quality even improved in my opinion, although there is a lot of plastic and I am very much allergic to plastic. But it is surprisingly RAM compatible using that neat little trick, which you may or may not like, but it is compatible. Now the next five minutes should have been me ranting about Be Quiet using all of that plastic, which 
Don't get me wrong, I still do not like that they went this way compared to the Dark Rock Pro 4, but comparing other air coolers that have been using those plastic shrouds all around them, in this case the plastic doesn't seem to block any air or create whistles that are annoying, so I guess it's not that bad and based on the performance results I'm, I'm going to keep it low this time. And the most impressive point is still performance. No matter if low, mid or over the top I am benchmarking as a fetish workload, the Dark Rook Elite is the best air based option as of now. Both performance and noise 2 performance. Ryzen 9, i9, everything below or whatever the hell Intel slaps on the market next year or even this year. It doesn't matter. This is the only air cooler that can handle them all. Whew, this review has become a bit too positive. I need to stop that. I, I feel un I, I feel uncomfortable. We we need to do something. Uh, we, uh, we need to find something really bad about this. Oh, I know. I know something bad. Which of course isn't in the box. What the hell is this screwdriver? You you really cheaped out on this one. Yeah, it looks n better in all black. I I get that, but the the handle is like basically just a thin piece of plastic filled with air. It doesn't have any, like any weight to it. Where, whereas the old one that was massive. That that one felt great. And the, even like the the the, the, the 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 rod has become a lot thinner. Like like what is this? This in the past you could always say hey get an amazing be quiet screwdriver and you will get a pretty good cooler with it. Now you will just get a shitty screwdriver and an amazing cooler with it. But what the hell am I going to do with this? I prefer the old one by, by far. This this is the cheapo version. For today, this is going to be it for Be Quiet and the Dark Rock Pro Elite, the new golden standard for air coolers. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we still have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership. So if you're looking for a good way to sell yourself on RG Poop, what you say pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to hire somebody who will find out what the heck is wrong with that proprietary fan connector. There are five pins, four of which are used, which I get, this PVM, you, you need the four. But what is that fifth four, which is unused? But, but, I need to find that out. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Silent Loop 2 into 80, which funnily enough can be outperformed by an air cooler. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Yeah, the screwdriver really sucks in comparison. And they also changed like the, the, the tip. It's now quite a lot smaller, so I hate it. The old one is so much better. The old one was working perfectly fine for like any K screw and the new one sometimes like like um uh, like goes through the thread like like uh jumps through and i really don't like it i prefer the old one by far they cheaped out on here by a lot ah, plastic